Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial. Today we're dealing with the third of the sound sculpting options inside our oscillator zoom. So this is going to be the wave shaper. Now the first thing to note, I've, this sound is completely initialized. I've just initialized the multi. So here we have a really straightforward sawtooth wave. There it is, saw square bright. Go back into the wave shaper. If I turn this thing on, it's going to immediately make an impact on the sound. You need to be aware that even though it looks like everything is set off, it, it is actually active. The way you make it have no effect on the sound by default is to turn this middle section off. Just because the depth is at zero doesn't mean it's not doing anything. You have to actually turn it off. And then we're still not completely there because it gets quieter and that's because your gain slider is set to 0.5 by default. Turn that all the way up. And now we've got a baseline. I always like to find out what the thing sounds like with no effect before I start bringing stuff in. Now then let's have a look at the three, the three different components in the Wave Shaper. Crusher first. So there are two different metrics by which you can bugger up a sound. You can mess with its sample rate, which is basically how many, how many slices it takes every second of the sound, and its bit rate, which is the resolution of the amplitude quality that it can handle. Basically, how finely resolved are the amplitude measurements that we can take of a wave. Now it's super easy. This is one of the more easy waves to demonstrate with an oscilloscope because there's our, there's our normal wave. And as I turn the bit crusher up, you see that it's very arbitrary and fixed values at which amplitude is being measured and really not very many of them. So reducing the bit rate gives you fewer and fewer steps in this um, oscilloscope wave. The net result of which is that it ends up sounding like, you know, this is classic like early 80s computer generated stuff where you have like 8-bit sound. Well, you can emulate that kind of stuff with the crusher. What it's really doing is just distorting the wave to hell and making it far less resolved. And there's that maximum bit crush, maximum bit reduction. Crush force adds an additional distortion to the wave. It calls it a, a, a unique distortion in the manual, but basically it's just an, an additional like destruction to the sound. It only has any effect if we turn bit crush all the way down. Force has no effect. So you have to be applying bit reduction in order to hear this distortion. And then let's see what effect and on the, the sight and sound we have. extra harmonics. If I just bring this into the equation for a moment, see all the higher frequencies. So at maximum in both directions, it's a brutally distorted wave. This mix slider down here actually applies to all three modules simultaneously. It's one master mix not just for the bit crusher. So I'll bring it back in again. But then bring the mix down. You can see it's starting to smooth the effect out until eventually we end up back with our regular wave again. So you can have utterly brutal bit crushing with massive bit reduction, but then only introduce a little part of it in to the actual composite sound. The, the manual's very mysterious about what the shaper element of the wave shaper does, except to say that there are four algorithms ranging from gentle to more extreme. Algorithms two and four result in silence if you've got the depth slider turned all the way down. So I'll press a C, and then we get complete silence. We have to bring depth in before we hear the sound. So I'll set the depth at 50%. And then go through the four settings. So 
Zero, three, and four are definitely the, the most harmonically rich. There's no detail in the manual as to what these algorithms actually are. Now note how when I turn one of these on, the wave gets much louder. Let's just hop over back to our um, insight again to have a look at the momentary volume. You can check on the short term as well. It's a similar kind of effect. If I turn the wave shaper off completely, we're at 35.3. Now, with just the shaper engaged, we get louder. And this is what you gain sliders for. As you're applying these um, like harmonic enhancements, you're adding harmonics to the sound. Some of the settings result in the overall volume being louder. Well, if you don't want that and you want to be able to uh, equalize those two, then the gain slider, again, this is common to all three modules. This is the overall gain. So again, if we just establish our baseline, 36.1 this time, because I've got some key sensitivity, velocity sensitivity on the keys. And we want to get this value down there, so you bring the gain down, and then let it settle down and find out what your new value is. And that's going to be close enough. You get the idea. Because it's a combined gain for all three modules, you are going to have to do it empirically. Just get your loudness meter up and figure out what uh, what volume you want. I'll set it back to maximum for the purpose of today. The audio path section down here simply determines where in the signal chain the wave shaper gets dropped. So is it after the oscillator, after the filter, or after the amplifier? And by default, it comes straight after the primary oscillator generated, comes into the wave shaper out of there, and then goes on to the other modules. But you can simply make it come after the filter instead by clicking that button. At the beginning of the video, I talked about the two different metrics by which you can ruin a sound. You can ruin it by the bit um, resolution, which is the amplitude, or you can destroy its sample rate, which is the number of slices that are, um, the, the number of snapshots that are taken in a second. That's what reducer does. Uh, and it's helpfully labeled sample rate. And we can see just throwing stuff away introducing like pretty brutal harmonic distortion into the sound. So both of these things together, you've really been very mean to the sound indeed. Uh, animation introduces vari variance on a per cycle basis to the, um, to the distortion applied by the reducer. So if we have a look at it with no animation on, then we've got a uniform looking wave shape. Nasty, but uniform. And now with animation engaged, it's really difficult to see when the wave's jiggling around, but if we pause it, each one of these individual waves is now um, a different pattern, which means you're gonna get even more variance in the distortion that you hear. It's a coloring of the distortion. Once you've inflicted all of the misery on the sound that you can from this module, click on this little box here and we have the opportunity to save our presets. And you can see that they've also given you some out of the box settings. adjustments, do what you want, set it to type 4, save the preset and then it'll take you to your user folder where you can save this preset and now you can see it down here as a selectable option. What's that poor sawtooth ever done to you? Brutal. That's the Wave Shaper module dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, hit notifications. I'll catch you for the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.